back then said the women were not important, but God said otherwise. God said, I'm going to choose this little girl to be the mother of the Savior of the world. And so today, as Mother's Day, we celebrate, we want to honor all of the women, whether you are a spiritual mother, whether you are a biological mother, or whether you are simply a little girl. God loves you and is pleased with you. So I'm going to ask Anna to read out Mary's song for us and lead us in prayer. My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is, is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. Let's pray. God, we praise you this morning that you are a holy father, our loving father. And God, we just praise you for all the moms who are gathered this morning. Thank you that you blessed us with a, a body and a heart to carry our next generation. Because of your blessing, we are able to continue to bless from generation to generation. God, we especially bless all the mom's spirit who are crushed by this world, that at, through this worship, that their spirit will rejoice in you. Yes. And for those who are in weakness and in sadness, that through worship, that their heart will be full of joy and happy. So God, we lift all the moms to bless them in your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen and amen. Let's declare how good our God is.
goodness into our very being, Lord, even when things seem like they're not good, even when we have struggles right now, Lord, in our sickness or our pressures, we say you're a good God. Thank you, Jesus. You are worthy of our praises. Thank you, Lord.
of our blessing and honor and glory. Is He worthy? Is He worthy? Is He worthy of it? He is. Is He worthy? that you are indeed worthy. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being our God. Amen. Well, church, it's so wonderful to praise the name of Jesus together. And now we're going to read together our offering verse from Malachi. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. Malachi 3.10 So as we worship our God, we just want to give Him our thank offerings. And if you would like to give as God has moved you, you may give online at the link there. You may drop off or mail a check. And all of this really is just to continue the work of worship and blessing God, blessing one another around our neighborhood. So thank you, church, for your generosity as we continue to make sacrifice to our Lord. So now we want to have a time to welcome uh, one another. So I'm just going to open up my screen so I can see everybody. We Every week we love to share the peace uh, with one another and if there's anyone who's new or visiting as a guest, uh, just send us a message. We would love to welcome you. So Jesus said, My peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. So may the peace of the Lord be with you. You can unmute her on your cameras. We say peace be with you. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Peace. Peace, peace, peace be with you. Mother's Day. Ladies. Peace, happy Mother's Day. Shalom. Shalom. Happy Mother's Day. Peace. 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 Wonderful. So now if our team can just send the uh, bulletin uh, onto the chat. So people, if you'd like, you can download the bulletin uh, in the chat. Peace be with you, everyone, all the children. And so we have a few announcements today, and let's get to them. Let's see. So I think the first announcement is something coming up uh, at the end of the month. It's called the Road, the Road to Racial Justice. I think some people haven't muted yet, so maybe just mute yourself and so we can hear clearly. Uh, that's okay. Uh, so the Road to Racial Justice is an online webinar that's happening on May 25th. It's a Tuesday. And what it is, it's, it's a group of Christians that I know. Um, it's organized by Dr. Krish Kandaya uh, from the UK. He taught at Regent before. And it's asking the question, one year on from the death of George Floyd, uh, just how far have we come? And what are our next steps? And what Dr. Krish is going to do is involve a panel of pastors, bishops, authors, rappers, broadcasters, people in the media as well, and just have a conversation around racial justice. And this is something that is on our hearts as a church, uh, for we know that racism is a sin just like any other, right? Like, like greed, uh, like selfishness. These are sins that plague the church and the world. And so as the church, we want to have these conversations. So a few of us will be joining. So we invite you to consider prayerfully joining. Uh, if you're available, it's Tuesday, May 25th. It's UK time, 8 o'clock, so it's 12 o'clock uh, here. And so if you are interested, um, just, oh, I forgot to provide a link. Um, so maybe uh, we will send out, put a, up a link on our website or through the small groups. We'll send out the links. Or you could also search up the event, The Road to Racial Justice, uh, with um, some of these speakers, uh, Krish Kandai, then you'll be able to find it. But yeah, we'll provide links uh, to our small groups. Yeah, I know, Jordan. So people who are at school can't make it, I know. People who are have uh, regular work days, unless you have lunch break, maybe you can join it. Um, but yeah, so for those of us who are able to join it, uh, then we can join. If not, that's okay too. There will be others as well. 
All right, next announcement. Here we go. There we go. Oh, that one. There we go. So, REC Youth is inviting. I don't. Pastor Josh, you want to talk about this? Sure. So, yeah, we're inviting all the incoming grade eight. So, current grade sevens who are graduating and coming into grade eight, we want to hang out with you on Zoom. And we're going to bake cookies together this Friday. So, um, 7 30 to 9 30. Please message me or have your parents message me. We will be, Carrie has graciously volunteered to help put together some dry ingredient packs so that you don't even have to really uh, go shopping for the stuff. You just need a few basic things at home. Um, but yeah, message me um, about that. And uh, yeah, we would love to see you this Friday. And I think the next announcement is me as well. Or is it? No, celebrating Eucharist. Yes. And prayer. And then I want to give an update. So now if you take a look in the bulletin, you can see all the details. But I'm just going to do a brief summary of just sort of where things are at sponsorships. So all the paperwork that we have uh, submitted in Canada has been approved on the Canadian side of things to be sent overseas to be processed. So this is sort of the, the long waiting process for them to, to go over everything, to fact check stuff. And if they get through that all, I don't know exactly what all the process is, but um, well, if they get through that, then hopefully in the next couple of years, they get to the point where they get an interview and if they get an interview and they pass that then that's when they're able to come so we don't know how long this could take it could be a several years process but at least we have it moving along now um, and we formed a core sponsorship team so myself and dixon are the co-sponsors um, and then we've also asked peter jung and dion chen to be uh, part of this team they're the uh, representatives and it doesn't mean that these are the only people who are going to be helping out. We definitely will need other uh, volunteers and people who are uh, willing to help out with different things like um, bringing them to get their driver's licenses or going to the doctors or uh, getting them, helping them get enrolled in schools and so on. Like basically all the things that we take for granted in terms of the regular rhythms of life, we need to get them situated into. And so we'll, we start off with this team and then um, as we get closer so when they arrive, then we'll begin to work on gathering other people who um, can provide help and resources to them and support them in this first year. Um, and the last thing that just to share is that we've begun doing some English language training for uh, the parents Nasir and Shagufta. And so, um, yeah, so we're really excited that they can have weekly English lessons and be learning um, how to speak more fluently and comfortably for when they come. The next thing is just a benevolent fun update. Um, so the church council was approached by ICV, the organization, International Christian Voice, who is helping us sponsor this family. And, um, and they were just asking if we would be willing to support their fundraising campaign for another Pakistani refugee uh, named Gulshur and his family. And Gulshur was the driver for ICV's um, the, the head of ICV, Peter Batiste, his brother, uh, who was a Christian minister in Pakistan and was assassinated a decade ago. And so Gulshar was the driver who witnessed this and, um, and they're in the process. Uh, Peter is in the process of sponsoring him, but they need to raise funds just as we raised funds. And so the church council agreed um, to support a total of $3,000 from the benevolent fund. Um, just as a representation of our church and our desire to be generous with the good things that God has given to us, we want to bless others. And so even though we're not directly sponsoring, we want to support and encourage um, ICV as well as Gosher and his family and help in them being able to come. So if you want to learn more, there's a link in the bulletin. Uh, on the donate page there, I think the, his name is highlighted for the hyperlink and you can click his name and there's a PDF that explains much more in detail about their story. Um, I know that, that he's been uh, a refugee for six years and he's been separated from his, his, his family, his, his, his wife and a bunch of kids, young children, and they haven't been able to be uh, reunited. So this is part of the process to get them all to Canada. Um, and if you don't know what the Benevolent Fund is, the Benevolent Fund is a fund that the church has that is used to uh, 
help provide financial relief to people who are in uh, need. In the past, we've helped people who have had very urgent housing needs. We've supported um, uh, different different uh, a, a fundraising drive for somebody who needed a prosthetic, a very expensive prosthetic. We've helped uh, help towards funeral costs, which are very expensive. And also, obviously, we raised funds for the Gill family. So this is the benevolent fund um, helping those in need. And that's what our church does. And so if you know of someone who is in urgent need of financial support, uh, please let a pastor or council member know. We That is what our benevolent fund is for. And if you feel called to give towards the benevolent fund, um, the more money that we have in there, the more money that we're able to give out to support. Uh, we have to hold a certain amount for the Gill family that we raised for them, but we have other amounts in there that we can use, that we have the flexibility to use for other reasons. So, um, yeah, if you want to contribute, in if you drop off a check or whatever at church, there is like a space where you can write down the benevolent fund. Or if you're going giving through PayPal, uh, you can just make a note of it in the notes section that you want to give specifically to the benevolent fund, and it will go there, and then we can use those funds to help people. That's all the announcements I have. Great. Thank you, Pastor Joss, for clarifying all of that. So um let's continue to respond to god's love as we uh, affirm his uh his, his, affirm the story of scripture through the apostles creed so let's read this together i believe in god the father almighty creator of heaven and earth i believe in jesus christ his only son our lord who was conceived by the power of the holy spirit born of the virgin mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now we're going to invite uh, a mother and daughter to read the gospel for us. Here's the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Amen. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. The greatest love a person can show is to die for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I don't call you servants now. A servant does not know what his master is doing. But now I call you friends because I have made known to you everything. I heard from my father. You did not choose me. I chose you. And I gave you this work to go and produce fruit. I want you to produce fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you anything you ask for my name. This is my command. Love each other. This, this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Okay. Now we're going to invite Sorry. Georgia to speak, so maybe high spotlight Georgia, our team. Yeah, sorry. My Wi-Fi challenge is here. <laughs> Georgia, are you able to flip your phone or tablet? It's the other way for us right now. Like that? Yeah, right now. Yep, there we go. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, just give me a minute to set this up. Let me know if that's okay there. That's okay. Yep. I think there was a little echo earlier, so maybe if the other device left, then it's okay. But it sounds okay now, I think. Okay. 
That's fine. Sounds good. Okay. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Um, I'm sure like maybe your children have woken you up with some goodies. Um, I don't know, I haven't had time to get my son, but he sent a message, which was good. Um, the last time, like uh, when I was home, like he really, uh, that was like two years ago. That was the last time we had like mother son moment and then COVID came and then we got stuck on either side of the Atlantic. So now this medium is really helpful that we can keep in touch with loved ones and just remind them that they are special and that we love them, we care for them and we appreciate them. And so happy Mother's Day to everyone. Uh, maybe just take a moment and, you know, greet each other in your homes. I know you've already done that, but it's all right. We can't get enough of sharing love and appreciation for each other. And really, I also want to take a moment to uh, maybe just speak a bit about uh, different days in which mothers or women are ce celebrated. I know uh, sometimes we celebrate, but then I don't know if we take time and really think about like, how come this day came to be? And I have listed there like a, a brief history, like some of us have heard of Mothering Sunday or some have heard of Mother's Day. Um, yeah, or Mother's Union, for example. And all these um, different days of celebrations are really speaking about the same thing, uh, like appreciating women and their contributions that they make uh, in raising families, um, in taking care of homes, in contributing to society. And just to speak about say, Mothering Sunday, uh, this was um, already celebrated in the church, uh, right? Like in the 16th century. And this came to be because um, sometimes families sent their children to work for the rich. At this time, the world, this was mostly in Europe, uh, the world was really poor. And so families would send their young children to go work for um, richer families, you know, clean houses, cook, bake, do all these things for richer families. And then once a year, they were given a day off. And usually it was on a Sunday when they would go back and visit uh, their mothers. And this day, this Sunday got to be called Mothering Sunday. And these kids would pick flowers on their way home and give to their parents when they got home. And so this was very, a very special day. You can imagine you have not seen your loved one for a long time and you are really anticipating, expecting them. And they bring you gifts of flowers along the way. And then it's spring. So of course, like May, um, is uh, spring, maybe we've grown some flowers or we've seen our flowers blooming and just setting up verses in our houses. It's the same thing. But in the church, the Mothering Sunday is um, the fourth Sunday of Lent. So this is actually in the liturgy of the church. And it's not just celebrating our biological mothers, it's celebrating Mary, the mother of God as well. Like uh, Pastor Iggy mentioned, like there's a song that is uh, from our mother, Mary. And also this Mothering Sunday was acknowledging Mary's place uh, in bringing forth the savior and also uh, the contribution that Jesus has brought us life. 
but also this Mothering Sunday was cre celebrating creation, the, what we call Mother Nature. And last, a few Sundays ago, we celebrated um, uh, Good Seed Sunday, right? So this Sunday also, Mothering Sunday, we look at nature as, as, as our mother because it provides us, it nurtures us, gives us food takes care of us, gives us water, air, everything. So we celebrate mother nature. And so as a Christian, you know, our relationship then with nature should be good because of what we get from nature as well. This Mothering Sunday also celebrated um, our own mothers who have given birth to us, our earthly mothers and their contribution I have said and the church as the mother of all of us. Like when you are baptized, the church in which you are baptized becomes like your mother church because that is when you were adopted into the church and in, into the body of Christ. So Mothering Sunday also is like the church as a mother to us, taking care of us, nurturing us and growing us spiritually. But then as the world progressed and society became more wealthy, people stopped sending their children to work because now they could afford for themselves. And so this tradition also sort of died in a way. Um, and then later we shall see that uh, Constance, whom I'm, I'm going into, uh, she's like after Jarvis, in England, she revived this tradition of of, of, of Mothering Sunday because she had heard of what Ann Jarvis was doing uh, in the US, in the United States of America. So Anna Jarvis was celebrating her mother who had died, uh, like was having a memorial for her mother. And just to acknowledge that her mom used to organize women and empower them and you know, do good work and that's what she wanted to do, commemorating her mom. But then very soon everybody started doing that, you know, and it was, it became like a Mother's Day thing that was um, established. And then it moved from just being a commemoration to people buying gifts and commercializing it, which Anna herself didn't like because her idea was not the commercialization of things. It was the spirit, the appreciation of the person, like instead of uh, this materialism, then clouds the real intent of the celebration. So today, even as we celebrate, as we share goodies and exchange goodies, like it is okay to buy those, but then the essence is relationship. The essence is relationship, appreciating one another, especially the people that care for us, and in this case, our mothers and all women, because as we shall see, Constance herself never married. You know, she was, she never married, she never had children, and yet she thought about women and thought about reviving Mothering Sunday because of the extent of the meaning of mothering, uh, not just limited to the physical human mothering, but also looking at it from spiritual, from creation and all that. And then Anna Jarvis herself was in the Methodist church, but then Costas was working from the Anglican church. So that's something that I like about these women. And also is an example for us as women in the church today, that we can also make a contribution from where we are. It's not, just the secular understanding of Mother's Day, but really um, progressing with the message of Christ, of relationship, of loving one another, but also recognizing the contribution that we each make. And I put there Mary Sumner because uh, as an Anglican, um, also like this started in, in, uh, in, in, in the UK, uh, Mary Sumner was a wife, uh, of a clergy. And then when she had her grand, first granddaughter, uh, she realized how much work that women uh, do in raising families. And so 
she started like a small group of women from her own church, uh, training young mothers how to be mothers, like what does it mean? How do you take care of your families? And before long, it grew into the church, the Anglican church. And we know with colonialism, many things that happened in, the, in England or the UK, also we are taken to colonial countries or states. So you'll find most of the English speaking uh, world have like the mother's union which is just a group of women uh, coming together. And their, their motto is Christian concern for families. So families that are grounded in the word of God and in the, uh, in the teachings of the Bible, that's what they promote. But also not immediate families. We also look at family extending to community, like what needs are there. So it goes into social justice and things like that. I put myself there because I'm wondering, OK, Georgia, who am I as a mother? Uh, but you can put your name there because I'm saying today we are the mothers. Those were our women those days and our mothers. But today we are the ones. Like, What contribution can we make? When our children look up to us, like what can they learn from us? And the key thing that is tying all these women is that they are within the church context and they are using their God-given um, convictions and gifts wherever they are. Mary Sumner was working from home. She was uh, staying at home. Uh, Constance, uh, her father was a priest as well. So she's a child of a priest. Uh, Anna Jarvis, her mother was very active uh, in her Methodist church. And so the movement moved uh, within the Methodist and into the world. But also what I like about these women is that their vision is worldwide. You know, Their vision is worldwide. Um, it cuts across race. It's not something just for like within the Methodist or within the Anglican. No, it is for every woman, wherever they are, whatever race whatever faith, because the values or the principles that they are advocating for are universal, you know? Like no child should go uh, to bed hungry. So if I'm a mother and my children have eaten, then I if I see a child that is hungry, I should be able to feed them, you know? Those are the, the things, like we have to look beyond also our own biological families. Uh, now, when we look into the worldwide nature of the movements, but also when we look at church as mother, she extends to the whole world. You know, Jesus himself, with John 3.16, that God uh, sent his son to the world. It's the whole world. So God's vision is for the world. So even us, as we are reaching, caring for our families, can we also have that kind of uh, kingdom vision that extends to the world. So you may want to put your name there and maybe the next slide. Yeah, so I just put a bit like uh, what the Mother's Union vision is and some of the objectives there and I'll just go through that quickly. Um, so their vision is a world where God's love is shown through loving, respectful and flourishing relationships. So it's about relationship and love and respect. And the purpose is to demonstrate the Christian faith in action by transformation of communities worldwide through the nature of the family in its many forms. So you can see that this is a, a faith that is active. It is an active faith. It is like we say, faith without works is dead, but also we want that as people see us, as we are, we are not just claiming with our mouths that we are Christians, but indeed our actions show God's nature to others. And as we shall see today um, in the sermon briefly, that uh, we are called to love the children of God, you know, who are those who are within the family of God you and I. So let's just see the objectives uh, there briefly. 
It says, to uphold Christ's teaching on the nature of marriage and to promote its wider understanding. To encourage parents to bring up their children in the faith and life of the church. To maintain a worldwide fellowship of Christians united in prayer, worship, and service. To promote conditions in society favorable to stable family life and the protection of children to help those whose family life has met with adversity. So you can see it's not just my family, but I'm also looking into society and um, affecting wherever I am, that I should make a difference wherever I am. Yeah, so to conclude, I would like to refer to the reading that we had today that and I ask the question that, am I really a Christian or are you a true Christian? Like what or who informs and shapes our family values, your family values? We have seen from these women uh, in their small ways, but also with the knowledge of God and the love of God, that they are able to reach out beyond themselves. Some of them have children, some don't have children. But it doesn't matter because as long as God has put something in your heart, like obedience will, 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 will be key. And it begins with the belief or the trust in the Lord Jesus. Next slide. We say that everyone who believes that Jesus Christ is born of God, is the Christ is born of God and everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. So when we believe, it's like we are agreeing, we are accepting that Christ, that Jesus is the Christ and that we trust him, we depend on him. You know, we don't depend on ourselves, but that we depend on him to lead us in every way. So it begins with that and that forms our identity. Then I say, okay, I'm a Christian. What does it mean that I trust Jesus? I follow him every step of the way. And how do I do that? Next slide. I demonstrate this through the love of God and the love of my neighbor. And my neighbor is really anybody, you know, because we are brothers and sisters. And it's through the obedience of God's word. It says, this is how we know that we love the children of God, by loving God and carrying out his commands. We love God and we carry out his commands. So there is an, an essence of obedience there. In fact, this is love for God to keep his commands and his commands are not burdensome. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. So we love God, obey his commands. We love his children as a mother, as a father, how would you feel if your children did not get along? Like if there was quarrel or fighting in the family, it would sadden your heart because you love your children so much, you give everything for them and you would want for them to get along, like to build strong bonds. But sometimes that doesn't happen. And yet you continue to love them, to pray for them and to wish them well. This is the same with our heavenly father, that he loves us so much. He gave us Jesus to teach us, to show us how we can live this life of love. And this love is not just for people who do good for us. Jesus says, we love even our enemies. We love even our enemies, you know, because his vision is for the whole world and in showing love to even those that we would prefer not to associate with, then we show them the love of God and them too can be drawn to God. But also these commands that we are obeying, they are not burdens. Actually, they are good for us. Like if you read Psalm 1, um, I forget, I was going to say Psalm 1, 39 or 105 that talks about the statutes of God. Um, it lists so many, uh, it's 119, I think, uh, that 
it lists so many statutes of God and what they are good, that they are good and we can depend on them. But also Jesus himself tells us that if we love him, yes, it's 119, thank you. If we love him, we will obey his commands. And this is also how the, the world will know that we are God's disciples when we love one another. And John himself, he writes and says that, how can we love God who we do not see and yet hate our brother or our sister whom we can see? And so this love is challenging us. It's challenging us to really dig deep and um, obey, live in obedience. Actually, it's this obedience that will help us to love our neighbors. These commands, they are not burdensome, I'm, they are good for us. And if we see it as they are good, then we will not see them as they are burdensome. These commands are like the compass, the compass for us, you know. Um, the psalmist rise and say, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path, which means it is directing me which way to go, like lighting, my path so I can go. So I know I'm on the right path because the word is lighting the way for me. And also as we parent, as we teach our children, you know, the word is also, they are guiding us what to do. Parents, do not be harsh towards your children. Children, honor your fathers and mothers, you know, and there's a promise as well. So your days will be many or will be long. So, the word tells us what to do, how to live, but it's about relationship, father, mother, children, and neighbors, slaves or workers. You know, it's all about relationship. And then lastly, this word is not just for us to obey, but it is for us to give witness to. And this word is Jesus. John 1.1 1, 1 talks about uh, the word becoming flesh and making his dwelling among us, you know. And when we give witness to this word, which is Jesus, we bring others to Christ and to God. But how do we give this witness? Jesus promised his disciples, uh, before he ascended to heaven, that he will send us a helper. And this helper is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will teach us all that Jesus has taught. He will remind us, he will be with us. And this is the spirit of truth. So we can trust God's word that it is true. And we can share it with others because we know it is true. But we can also live it because we can trust that it is true and is leading us um, in all godliness, you know. So as we think about God and his spirit and Jesus, Jesus is born of water and of blood. In other words, he's identified with our humanity. He has been through everything that we have also gone through. In fact, he says nothing has overcome us except that which is common to us as men or as human beings. But he also makes a way for us that we can stand up over all these challenges. But how do we overcome? We are promised to overcome. Jesus said it is finished on the cross when he, he was being uh, crucified. It is finished. The work he has come to do is finished. And we can trust that it is indeed finished through him. And through his resurrection, we are also given hope to overcome even death. Everything in life, even death. And to have eternal life through Christ. But also we overcome the world, which is, can be Satan, can be our own flesh, can be temptations. But we overcome and then we rule with Christ. Revelation has so much talk and promise about us sitting with Christ 
and ruling with him and you know, overcoming the work of Satan and all his agents. And so we can also live with this promise. Right now we are living in a world really which we don't know about tomorrow. You know, the guidelines keep changing. They open, they don't, they close, open, close. We cannot live in that kind of up and down anxiety. And people wish for the new normal. But then recently I have been thinking that I actually don't have a new normal. I only have the moment that I'm given today, like now, this is my normal. What am I doing with it? This is my normal. So let us live like that, knowing that Christ is coming again, um, living each moment for him, for our families, but more importantly for the world. And so I wish you all happy Mother's Day as you have your lunch or dinner, outing, the weather is beautiful. Uh, may the love of Christ dwell in you that you may richly live for him as he has called each one of us to. May God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Georgia. Let's continue on now. Oops. Let's continue on now as we say our prayer of confession. Lord, our maker and our redeemer, this is your world and we are your people. Come among us and save us. We have willfully misused your gifts of creation. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have seen the ill treatment of others and have not gone to their aid. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sins. We have condoned evil and dishonesty and failed to strive for justice. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sins. We have heard the good news of Christ but have failed to share it with others. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sins. We have not loved you with all our heart, nor our neighbors as ourselves. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sins. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now we have our time of Eucharist. I give you a moment, a, a minute just to gather your stuff and, uh, and we'll begin in a minute. All right, I invite you, if you would like to unmute and respond, you may do so. We love to interact. Is the Father with us? Yes. yes. Is Christ among us? Yes. yes. Is the Spirit here? Yes. yes. This is our God. Father, Father Son, and Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. We are his people. We are. We are we lift up your hearts. Lift up your hearts. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and our delight to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, living God, supreme over the world, creator, provider, savior, and giver. From a wandering nomad, you created your family. For a burdened people, you raised up a leader. For a confused nation, you chose a king. 
For a rebellious crowd, you sent your prophets. In these last days, you have sent us your son, your perfect image, bringing your kingdom, revealing your will, dying, rising, reigning, remaking your people for yourself. Through him, you pour out your Holy Spirit, filling us with light and life. Therefore, with therefore, therefore, with angels, archangels, and all in heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord, God of our power and might. Heaven and God earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. highest. And Almighty God, owner of all things, we thank you for giving us your only son to die on the cross for us who owe you everything. Pour your refreshing spirit on us as we remember him in the way he commanded through these gifts of your creation. On the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread and you can take up your bread or cracker or whatever you have. And he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. Amen. 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 His body was broken for us. Now we're going to take up the cup. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my cup, blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ, 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 Christ will come again. We are brothers and sisters through his blood. We have died together, rise together, 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 live together. together. Amen. Therefore, Heavenly Father, hear us as we celebrate this covenant with joy and await the coming of our brother Jesus Christ. He died in our place, making a full atonement for the sins of the whole world. The perfect sacrifice once and for all. You accepted his offering by raising him from death and granting him great honor at your right hand on high. Amen. 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 This is the feast of victory. The Lamb Hallelujah, indeed. Now, as Jesus taught us, we now pray. Our Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. And now we invite you to take part in communion. So serve one another with the body of Christ, which is broken for you, and the blood of Christ, which is shed for you. Amen. Body of Christ broken for you. Body of Christ broken for you. Oh, thank you. All right, let's continue on. Let's pray together this prayer. Almighty God, Holy Father, we have sat at your feet, learned from your word, and eaten from your table. We give you thanks and praise for accepting us into your family. Send us out with your blessing to live and to witness for you in the power of the Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, Christ, the firstborn from, from the dead. dead. Now, if you have a cross in your family, in your in your room, you can point at that, or I'm going to hold one right here, and you can point at this. 
<laughs> all right, all our problems. We send to the cross of Christ. All our difficulties. We send to the cross of Christ. All the devil's works. We send to the cross of Christ. And all of our hopes we set on the risen Christ. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path in the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. 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 Let's worship together now as we declare the love of Jesus over us. Yes, it is the love that overcomes the world. It is the love in our families, into our mothers and fathers, and into all the world. Amen. He became sin. He became sin. Who knew no sin that we might become his righteousness? He humbled himself and carried the cross. Love so amazing. Love so amazing. Jesus Messiah. Name of our The ransom from heaven, Jesus Christ, Lord of the world, His body, His body, the bread.
May the Lord who brought us to birth through his spirit strengthen us for the Christian life. And may he who provides for all our needs sustain us from day to day. And as the Lord's love is constant as our mother's love, may he send us out to live and to work for others and for him. And the blessing of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Well, bless you, everyone. Have a wonderful Mother's Day and weekend. If you'd like to stay for prayer, stay on, message us. We would love to pray with you. Otherwise, enjoy a beautiful Mother's Day. Bye bye, everyone. Happy Mother's Day. Amen. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day.